a very warm good evening each and everyone present here so once again welcome back to your favorite and my favorite bio point stream the world of bio so once again we are back with yet another super awesome session on molecular basis of inheritance lecture one for this week me 2021 batch and this is the topic from genetics unit genetics and the topics that are to be covered in this session are dna structure of dna packaging and packaging of dna so hope you all are perfectly ready for this session so be there till the end and let's start this session so once again welcome you all to this awesome session from biopoint stream the world of bio so let's move on and do not forget to hit the like button do share it with your friends and do subscribe the youtube channel biopoint stream the world of bio and do not forget to press the bell icon so that you will get all the notifications of the uploaded videos so hope you all are perfectly ready and let's start today's session on molecular basis of inheritance starting with nucleic acids okay so before moving on to that, let's learn something more, right? Let's learn something more. Okay, so who coined the term factor? This is just a recap from the chapter principles of inheritance and variation. So who coined the term factor? The term factor was coined, uh, the term factor was coined by the scientists. Mentor, Griha Johan, mentor. And who coined the term gene? Who coined the term gene? The term gene was coined by a scientist known as Johansson. Johansson. The term gene was coined by a scientist known as Johansson. Okay, fine. Then one more thing that you have to check is, one more thing that you have to check is, one more thing that you have to check is who said that genes are linearly arranged on chromosomes? Who said that genes are, uh, genes are linearly arranged on chromosomes? Uh, it was said by a scientist known as T.H. Morgan. T.H. Morgan said that genes are linearly arranged on chromosomes. So, in this chapter, in this chapter, we are going to study what is a gene chemically. The first thing that we are going to study is what is a gene chemically. So, what is this gene chemically? So, gene chemically, whether it is a DNA or a protein, that's what we are going to learn right now. What is a gene chemically, whether it is a DNA or a protein. So as you all know, this is the structure of a chromosome. Right? This is the structure of a chromosome. Okay, fine. So in this chromosome, if we mark this DNA and gene, if we mark this DNA and gene, here we can mark the DNA. Sorry, DNA and proteins, not gene, DNA and proteins. And here we can mark protein. So guys, is it clear? Here we can mark proteins. So from this, what you have to check is what is this gene chemically so here you can see in the part of the gene the same parts we have marked this dna and protein so we can say that this dna or unwinding this dna all of you know that this dna is a double helical structure right is a double helical structure and on unwinding this you can see a core of proteins there with eight set of proteins Okay, so this proteins together wind together to form this DNA. Therefore, we can say this gene is chemically made up of DNA, which is further made up of what? 
which is further made up of proteins is that clear is that clear till now okay fine nucleic acid so now moving on with our topic nucleic acids so nucleic acid contains both this dna and rna and both this dna and rna together constitute the genetic uh, that is a nucleic acid which are the building blocks of genetic material and most of the organisms are having dna as their genetic material and some viruses have this rna as their genetic material and this rna mostly functions as messengers and nucleic acid that is both dna and rna was first discovered by a scientist known as was first i'm just creating a board here okay was first discovered by a scientist known as dr fredrich mica dr fredrich mica okay so uh, this nucleic acid that was first discovered by uh, what this frederick mica from the nucleus how he discovered that he discovered this nucleic acid from the nucleus of wbcs from the nucleus of leukocytes or wbcs and he termed this nucleic acid as nuclein and he termed this nucleic acid as nuclein so the first name of this nucleic acid was nuclein and later on a scientist known as altman altman renamed this nuclein as nucleic acids so who renamed this nucleic acid as nuclein sorry uh, nuclein as nucleic acid a scientist known as altman okay fine so polynucleotides are the polymer of nucleic acids dna and rna are polynucleotides so dna and rna are polynucleotides and this polynucleotides as the polymer of nucleotides and this nucleotides has three main components that is nitrogenous base pentose sugar and phosphate group nitrogenous base pentose sugar and phosphate group and the uh, pentose sugar in rna is ribose sugar and pentose sugar in dna is deoxy ribose sugar pentose sugar in rna is ribose sugar and pentoxy uh, pentose sugar in dna is deoxy ribose sugar okay fine so compared to this ribose deoxy ribose has less reactivity compared to this ribose sugar deoxy ribose has less reactivity let me write here that's why i'm making the screen black okay so compared to this ribose deoxy ribose has so i'm just representing r and t r and t okay ribose and deoxy ribose so uh, deoxy ribose have less reactivity so ribose have a greater reactivity than uh, deoxy ribose because they have less number of oxygen atom deoxy ribose have less number of oxygen atom therefore less electron negativity so in case of this ribose and deoxy ribose sugar ribose sugar has greater reactivity greater number of oxygen atom and greater electron negativity and just opposite to that of deoxy ribose sugar next is phosphoric acid phosphoric acid that is h3po4 another component of nucleotide phosphoric acid and this phosphoric acid is represented by the molecular formula p double bond o oh 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 okay p double bond o oh 
OH, OH. Right? Okay, fine. And this phosphoric acid have a slight negative charge. And after that, we are moving in detail with our topic that is the nitrogenous bases. And this nitrogenous bases are heterocyclic rings. They are heterocyclic. Oh. So this nitrogenous bases, they are heterocyclic rings. Uh, and that can be divided mainly into two, that is purines and pyrimidines. Purines and pyrimidines. Purines and pyrimidines. Okay. And this purines can be further divided into this all we have in our upcoming slides, but I'm just uh, explaining to you right now. Purines can be divided into Adenine, guanine, adenine and guanine. And this pyrimidines can be divided into thymine, cytosine, and uracil. Thymine, cytosine, and uracil. This is the division of pyrimidines. So from this, from this, adenine always pair with thymine by a double hydrogen bond. By a double hydrogen bond. And guanine always pairs with cytosine by a triple hydrogen bond. By a triple hydrogen bond. In order to show the bonding, I'm just drawing like this, okay? And what is this in case of uracil? Which pairs with uracil? Adenine, if it is in case of RNA, instead of thymine, it pairs with uracil by a double hydrogen bond. And instead of uh, uracil in DNA, adenine pairs with thymine by a double hydrogen bond. Okay. So this is what we have discussed. Nitrogenous base can be divided into two purines and pyrimidines. Purines are adenine and guanine. The pyrimidines are cytosine, thymine, and uracil, and adenine can be represented by the letter capital A. Cytosine, guanine can be represented by the letter capital G. Pyrimidines, cytosine can be represented by the letter capital C. Thymine can be represented by the letter capital T, and uracil can be represented by the letter capital U. So adenine always pairs with thymine in case of DNA by a double hydrogen bond. Guanine always pairs with cytosine in a DNA by a triple hydrogen bond. Adenine pairs always pairs with uracil in case of RNA by a double hydrogen bond. This is what about the nitrogenous bases and their bonding. Okay. A nitrogenous base is linked to a pentose sugar through an N-glycosidic linkage to form nucleoside. So the bond between a pentose sugar and a uh, nitrogenous base is known as N uh, what glycosidic N glycosidic bond. And linkage between the pentose sugar and the nitrogenous base. This linkage is known as what uh, glycosidic linkage. Okay. Okay. So, then, so nucleosides in RNA and nucleosides in DNA, adenosine and deoxyadenosine, guanosine and deoxyguanosine, cytidine and deoxycytidine, uridine and deoxythymidine. Okay, that's all, just uh, leave this table, okay. Leave this table. Then, so what is the nucleotide? As we have discussed, the nitrogenous base, a uh, pentose sugar, and a phosphate group together constitute a nucleotide or deoxyribonucleotide. And now we are going to discuss some 
uh, points of RNA and DNA. Some points that come as difference between RNA and DNA. RNA and DNA. So let's check that. Right? So is it clear till now? Is it clear till now? Comment me. Okay, fine. So, hope it's perfect. So, moving on in detail about which nucleotide or sorry, which nucleic acid is more reactive and unstable. So, which nucleic acid is more reactive and unstable? Exactly, it is RNA. RNA is more reactive and unstable. Okay, why it is more reactive and unstable? That's what we are going to discuss now. Okay, why it is more reactive and unstable? Because it contains the more reactive ribose sugar. Because it contains the more reactive ribose sugar. And the unstable nitrogenous base known as uracil. It has the unstable nitrogenous base called as uracil therefore we can say rna as the most reactive because of ribose and uh, what unstable because of uracil okay so therefore since it is more reactive and unstable they have a chance for mutation they have a chance for mutation then as usual the next question is which nucleoc uh, nucleic acid is stable and less reactive? Stable and less reactive, it is exactly DNA. It is exactly DNA due to the presence of, due to the presence of, it is DNA due to the presence of deoxyribose sugar, which is less reactive, right? Deoxyribose sugar, which is less reactive. And uh, the more stable thiamine, the more stable thiamine. So, since it is less reactive and stable, there is less chance for mutation. Okay, okay. So, that's all for the stable and unreactive nucleo nucleic acid. Okay, reactive and less reactive nucleic acid. So, hope it's clear till now. Hope it's clear till now. Hope it's clear till now. Okay. In an RNA, each nucleotide has an additional OH group, hydroxy group at the second position of ribose. At the second position of ribose. Okay. Here you can see in the second position of ribose, you have a hydroxyl group. And two nucleotides are linked together. Two nucleotides are linked through a 3 dash, 5 dash, phosphor diester bond. Phosphor diester bond to form a dinucleotide. So two nucleotides combined together or linked together by a 3 dash, 5 dash, phosphor diester bond to form dinucleotide. And when nucleo more nucleotides are linked, it forms polynucleotide. Okay, when more nucleotides are linked, it forms polynucleotide. Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. The DNA. So, a scientist known as Frederick Mica identified DNA and named it as Euclid. James Watson and Francis Crick proposed the double helical model of DNA based on the X-ray diffraction data produced by Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin. So, how is this DNA discovered? That's what we are going to learn right now. Okay. So, the history of DNA. Let's discover that and before moving on to that 
do not forget to join the telegram group where we have the daily session updates regular discussion daily polls and you can interact with me so the direct link for the group is given in the description box so it is t.me slash need underscore bio point so hope you all are perfectly fine and clear with the concepts start till now and let's move on in detail with the history of dna okay guys fine history of dna if we say about the history of dna we said that the double helical model of dna was proposed by a scientist known as uh francis and crick right by a scientist known as francis and crick so before moving on to that there is some history with the discovery of dna okay there is some history with the discovery of dna uh, two scientists as we have discussed known as rosalind franklin and dr wilkins right franklin and wilkins they conducted the x-ray diffraction experiment for the first time x-ray diffraction experiment for the first time but they didn't get the structure of dna but they didn't get the structure of dna and later in 1953 later in 1953 as uh, two scientists known as james watson dr james watson and Francis Crick and Francis Crick again conducted the continuation of the x-ray diffraction experiment which was once set by or once discovered once performed by uh, Rosalind Franklin and Dr Wilkins and finally they obtained the double helical structure of DNA double helical model of dna francis and crick model of dna is that clear is that clear okay fine and they got the nobel prize for the experiment which was conducted by rosalind franklin and dr wilkins okay fine so now we are moving on to the structure of dna now we are moving on to the structure of dna all are ready okay fine dna is made up of two nucleotide two polynucleotide uh, two polynucleotide chains called in a right handed fashion and the pitch of the helix is 3.4 nanometer that is 30 for angstrom look 3.4 nanometer this is the pitch of the helix this is what we say to be pitch of the helix and uh the number of base pairs in each turn in each turn we have 10 base pairs we have 10 base pairs in each turn if these are the turns right if these are the turns we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 ten. 10 ten base pairs in each turn of a dna and the distance between the adjacent base pairs is 3.4 nanometer or 3.4 uh, 0.34 nanometer or 3.4 angstrom this is the distance between two base pairs okay okay fine structure of dna backbone of dna is formed of this sugar and phosphate and the bases project inside 
these chains have an anti parallel polarity that is one chain has the polarity 5 dash 3 dash look here 5 dash 3 dash 5 dash ending with 3 dash ending with 5 dash and 5 dash ending with 3 dash with both strands are uh, held together by nitrogenous bases the bases project inside and the two chains have anti parallel polarity that is their opposite but parallel to each other so that is one chain has the polarity 5 dash 3 dash and either chain has the polarity 3 dash dash so let's check it how is that okay oh my god Just imagine that this is the structure of uh, DNA and we have uh, nitrogenous bases in the middle. Just drawing three only, three or four. Okay, let's imagine this is the DNA. Okay. Okay, so from this, we can see how it is marked this 5 dash and 3 dash. So if this point is starting with 3 dash, the end of this strand will be 5 dash. And if this strand is starting with 5 dash, and here we have the ending 3 dash. And the, here it will not come 3 dash and 3 dash together because it has the DNA has an anti-parallel polarity and the parallel polarity okay the bases in two strands are paired through hydrogen bonds forming base pairs hydrogen bonds just tightly won this adenine thymine bond guanine cytosine bond and in rna adenine uracil bond adenine always pairs with thymine or uracil by two hydrogen bonds and with guanine by uh, guanine and cytosine, I did not, I didn't, guanine and cytosine pairs together by three hydrogen bonds. Urine comes opposite to pyrimidine and this generates the uniform distance between two strands. Look, the uniform distance between two strands is made by, made, uh, what, is created by the, uh, uh, what, the two nitrogenous base, uh, two nitrogenous bases, purine and pyrimidine linking together in a, in two strands each other okay so dna has a slight negative charge due to the presence of oxygen in the phosphoric acid we have said that phosphoric acid is slightly negative due to the presence of oxygen in the same way due to the presence of this phosphor is slightly negative phosphoric acid dna is slightly negatively slight negatively charged okay is it clear is it clear? Is it clear? Okay, fine. So this is the structure of DNA. That's what we have discussed right now. So let's look at that and have a recap of the structure of DNA till now. Okay, so fine. Okay, Erwin Chargaff's rule. Erwin Chargaff's rule. Okay, fine. Erwin Char Erwin Chargaff's rule. So what is this Erwin Chargaff's rule? We said that before moving on to this theory written here, let's describe what is this Erwin Chargaff's rule. Okay. We said that we said that adenine always pair with thymine and guanine always pair with cytosine. Right? So the sum of the sum of sorry the number of adenine is always equal to the number of thymine and the number of guanine is always equal to the number of cytosine. 
and if we add adenine and guanine, if we have do the sum of adenine and guanine, we will get the sum of thymine plus cytosine since all are equal. Since adenine and thymine are equal and guanine are cyto and cytosine are equal, if we do the sum of guanine and cytosine or uh, adenine and guanine, sorry, adenine and guanine, we get the sum of thymine and cytosine. Is that clear? Is that clear now? Okay, fine. So hope it's okay. Fine. So this is all about Erwin Sargab's rule. This one. Okay. In a DNA, the proportion of adenine is equal to thymine and guanine is equal to cytosine. Therefore, A plus G equal to T plus C or A plus G by T plus C is equal to 1. Okay. Fine. So, let's do some problems with this Erwin Sargauss rule. Okay. Okay, guys, so let's do some problems. Question one, in the given DNA percent, the percent of adenine, percent of adenine is given as 5%. And thymine, and you have to calculate, thymine is not given. In the given DNA percent, adenine is equal to 5% and calculate the percent of cytosine. We have to calculate the percent of cytosine. Adenine is only given there. Okay, so all of you know that the number of adenine is always equal to the number of thymine, therefore it is also 5%. So A plus T, adenine plus thymine, sum of adenine and thymine gives 10%. Okay, therefore guanine plus cytosine is equal to total 100% and here we have 10% so guanine plus cytosine 90% therefore cytosine is equal to 90 by 2 that is equal to 45% okay okay fine the next problem in the given DNA guanine is equal to 6.2% guanine is equal to 6.2% and calculate the percent of adenine, calculate the percent of adenine. In the same way, adding guanine and cytosine, that is 6.2 plus 6.2, you will get 12.4, 12.4. In the same way, 100 minus 12.4, you will get 87.6 and this 87.6 divided by 2, that is 43.2. 8 43.8 8. 43.8 is that clear is that clear okay fine so calculation of length of dna that is length of dna is equal to number of base pairs into distance between two adjacent base pairs that is number of base pairs in human that is 6.6 into 10 raised to 9 and hence the length of DNA is 6.6 into 10 raised to 9 into distance between two base pairs that is 0 0.34 into 10 raised to minus 9, which is equal to 2.2 meter. In the same way, we are calculating the length of DNA and the number of base pairs in case of E. coli. Okay, fine. Next, we are moving on to the last and final topic of the day. Packaging of DNA. Packaging of DNA. In prokaryotes. In prokaryotes, how is this DNA packed? In prokaryotes, the DNA is not scattered throughout the cell. DNA is negatively charged, so it is held with some positively charged proteins to form nucleotides. So, in prokaryotes, the DNA is present in the nucleotide along with some positively charged proteins. Whereas in case of eukaryotes, DNA is negatively charged. 
so it is packed with positively charged proteins called as histones and this histone doesn't exist at a single protein it exists with a core of histone proteins that is with a set of eight histone proteins known as histone octama so the set of eight histone proteins known as histone octama is that clear is that clear guys okay fine okay fine then natively charged dna is wrapped around the stone of taba to give nucleosome and this is stones are positively charged the basic amino acid residues of lysine and arginine a typical nucleosome contains 200 base pairs very important mark it a typical nucleosome contains 200 base pairs and therefore the total number of nucleosomes in humans is total number of nucleosomes in humans is 3.3 into 10 raised to 7 3.3 into 10 raised to 7 so let's discuss something more let's discuss something more okay so this is ston proteins out of your ncrt are of five types ston proteins are of five types that is h1a h2a h3b H three and H four. These are the two types of. Uh, these are the five types of. I mean, no, as uh, sorry, five types of histone proteins. Okay, from this H two A, H three B, and H three and H four, they constitute together unite two is unite to form a ball. Called histone octamer, they together unite to form a ball called histone octamer, and its peripheral charges positive, and its peripheral charges positive. And guys, this is to inform you that here in the description box, the updated link for the updated playlist is directly provided. So just click on to that, and you will be available. You will get the entire playlist of Crash Course 2021 for this week each batch, and we have almost 23 videos uploaded yet, and including this, we have 24 videos. Okay, and that's all. Uh, what are the uploaded videos till now? And the chapters that are yet to be completed will be taken as soon as possible. Okay. So fine. So kindly visit this up. Utilize this updated playlist maximum and just keep on revising each and every chapters of bio. Okay, fine. Nucleosomes constitute repeating unit to form chromatin. In chromatin, chromatin is thread-like stained bodies, and nucleosomes in chromatin are like beads on a string. Nucleosomes in chromatin are like beads on a string. Look here, the histone proteins are wound. Look here, the histone proteins are wound like beads on a string. Okay, and this chromatin is packaged together to form chromatin fibers, and which which is coiled and contents at the metaphase stage forms chromosomes. Higher level packaging of chromatin requires NHC proteins. Higher level packaging of chromatin require NHC proteins. So, what is this NHC proteins? They are non histone chromosomal proteins that is proteins other than histone present in chromosomes okay and there's on staining chromosomes on staining of chromosome two types of regions are obtained on staining of chromosomes two types of regions are obtained what are they so let me draw the structure of a chromosome Imagine that this is the structure of a chromosome. Okay, fine. 
So here we will be having certain regions like like this. Okay, here are two. Here are two. Here. Here. And here. Okay, fine. So, like this, two types of regions are obtained in case of on staining of a chromosome. And the first region is called as euchromatin. Euchromatin and the second type of region and the second type of region that is this part is known as heterochromatin heterochromatin so what is the difference between this euchromatin and heterochromatin euchromatin stains light and heterochromatin stains dark Okay, and this euchromatin are loosely bound and they are transcriptionally active. And this heterochromatin are tightly bound and transcriptionally inactive. This is all about the two types of chromosome, two types of regions on staining of a chromosome. Yes, it's given here. What is euchromatin and what is heterochromatin? Given here, loosely packed, transcriptionally active, stains light, densely packed, inactive region of chromatin, and stains dark. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay, fine. So that's all for the day. That's all for the day. Thank you all. Thanks for your patient listening. Hope the topic DNA, structure of DNA and packaging of DNA is perfectly clear for you. Perfectly clear for you. So that's all for today. Do not forget what I have said right in the beginning. Do hit the like button, do share it with your friends and do subscribe Biopoint Steam the World of Bio. So that's all for today. It's me signing out from your favorite and my favorite Biopoint Steam the World of Bio. Bye-bye.